Hey everybody, it's Jochen Haydn and I'm back with the big one. This is uh, the 5th of February 1942, the Battle of Luganville, the real battle. Um, as you may recall from my last video, I bet the farm on this. I went all in with all my chips, all my ships, all my planes. Everything is riding on a successful defense of Luganville. So I think this is the turn we're going to find out how that goes. I hope it goes well, but I have no idea. And I'm sure we've got some other stuff going on in the Indian Ocean right now that's going to be important. So let's just watch this. You'll watch it with me as, as you see it at the same time, and we'll see how it goes. All right, we're off to the races. February 5th, 1942, turn 61. <sighs> There's not much else to say, but let's see how this goes. Okay, so we captured Butuan back on Cagayan, or Mindanao. He captures a dot base near Guadalcanal. Okay, here we go. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, man, I hope we can save that thing. Man, this, these subs are just awful. Uh, it's going to be questionable if we can save this this destroyer, the Flusser. So he fires four torpedoes at it. Uh, one hit on fire. Yeah, there it goes. Man, this is... It's basically making Colombo an unviable base to operate out of. Alright, so this is one of our destroyers fighting back against his, but... We have absolutely horrible luck against his subs. <sighs> and that's that stinks. I don't have enough destroyers to be wasting like that. All right, and again, he fires torpedoes at our sub sub hunting ship here. So really. Honestly, the way this is working out for me is that oh, we can't seem to hurt his subs. So all we can do is is use our less important ships as you know bait to bait out his torpedoes, and run him out of torpedoes. That seems to be our only strategy if, uh, to deal with his subs right now, and I really hate it. What can I do? We're like stuck in Ceylon like this. It just stinks. Look at all those subs. Look at them all. Oh. Wow. Ah, look at this. So this is south of Wake Island. These are destroyer mine layers that caught up with one of his patrol boats to the south. Hopefully these guys can do something. There we go. Finally. Don't let him get away, guys. Don't let him get away. Nice. Every hit here is going to cause a lot of damage to this little patrol boat. Yeah, we're closing them down. He can't run away. These DMs can do almost 30 knots, and he cannot. Excellent. Oh yeah, we're <laughs> this patrol boat's in trouble. A little payback, man. Payback for that destroyer we lost near Ceylon. Okay, I think we know how this is gonna go, so we'll just go ahead and uh, get to the point here. This guy's finished. Wow, look at that. 19 shell hits. That thing tanked a lot of damage. So we take out this little patrol boat that he had operating uh, in the Marshall Islands. This is just a little consolation prize for us. Uh, obviously, a patrol boat is no trade for an American destroyer, but I'll take a I'll take a, a victory any day of the week. Good job, guys. Okay. Oh. Oh, I think he got away. Oh, come on! You gotta give me a break here, man. 
Shoot. Our subs are just mm, frustrating. So frustrating. How do you miss that shot? Okay, so we have the S23 operating in through here, through um, the passageway through the Solomons down towards Tulagi. And eh, we just got hit. We took a shot on an AK in this convoy here, um, and we miss, but now we get damaged as a result. That's so frustrating. I just want subs to actually do something. Alright, 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 all right. that's enough. <sighs> okay, so here we go. We have an AP and an AK with the sub chaser escort heading this direction, I assume. I don't even know which direction it's heading in, honestly, so... You know, it is what it is. This won't be too bad of a hit for this sub. I wish we could have got a torpedo into one of these, though. So, Lismore over here is doing the best job it possibly can, keeping his subs, you know, pinned down. Oh, we got a hit, finally. Okay, got another hit. Finally, we have something go our way in the submarine combat here. And this is right off of Colombo. Okay, another hit. Excellent. Man, this guy's just got tons of... Uh, he's got to be almost out, right? Wow. So we're reporting three hits on I-156. I, I, it's not going to sink it, but, you know, maybe it'll drive him back for repairs. One last sub that we got to deal with. I knew it. I called it. I totally called it, didn't I? Didn't I tell you guys that he was going to bring in heavy cruisers to bombard? I totally called this. Uh, fortunately for us, he brought in a, a pretty light forces and this is not going to cause us any significant issues so we know where the Nazis at I knew he was going to bombard too oh didn't see that coming so he's coming here at Banja Masin in Borneo uh, he's landing looks like two SNLF units the Sasebo 8th and the uh, Yokosuka 4th Been pretty busy so far. Now we got daylight, so. Oh, did you hear that? Something just hit a mine. Something just hit a mine, guys. That wasn't one of ours. Uh, Lismore's still out here doing work. God bless him. Okay, here we go. He's coming in, guys. He's doing it. He's coming for it. He's really going for it. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. He's really doing it. Okay. So, here we go. We got 25 zeros doing a a fighter sweep. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this because there's nothing to gain from us sitting here watching this all day. All right. Wow! Look at that. Whoa! Check this out. We 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 wrecked them. This is reporting nine zero shot down over Colombo. Amazing. I did not expect that. Wow. 
and it's only showing that we lost two Fulmars, which are absolutely horrendous aircraft. They're the worst, but that's all I've got. So I put up some Hurricanes and the Sea Hurricanes and the Fulmars off of the uh, Indif Ind uh, uh, Indomitable because I knew he was, well, I didn't know. I assumed he was going to attempt something like this, and sure enough, he did, but we were ready for him. We got him this time. It must have been the radar intercept. Let's see, how long did we have to get ready? No, see, raid was detected at 33,000 feet, four minutes to target. That's no time to react. And he was sweeping, yeah, high altitude from what I can see, but we still won the day. Excellent. Oh, that's, that's huge for us. Okay, we've got the air raid coming in from uh, Luzon to hit our troops in Butuan. The killers of Kagayan. This strike was pretty effective. It's got a Babs? I don't believe that. Okay, now he's hitting Baton. This is a uh, air base uh, strike to damage the damage our ability to build forts, but hey, t uh, see, I'll give you a little secret. We're not building forts because we have no supplies, so, you know, that's cool. Ooh, now he's shifting focus to other other targets here. I have, This is the first time he's hit this hex with bombers. He must be running out of stuff to hit. All right, so these are our bombers coming in to do what we can to soften up the Japanese here. So we don't do anything to them at all. B-17's coming in. Don't do much of anything. More B-17s. Rinse and repeat. Just not, not putting a dent in them. Where's that Kido Butai raid in, uh, at um, Luganville? I'm waiting for it. What? Okay. Something just sank. Did you hear that? Something just sank. Whatever hit a mine just sank. Well, that's not good. That's not good. Um, uh, we're in trouble, guys. Okay, he's hitting Sion. It's a raid on the airfield at Changsha, and it's a big raid today. He does get a lot of hits in there. Okay, bombing raid up here. Another bombing raid, he's just trying to slow us down. Another raid on Changsha here. Gets more hits. Is he close? He is really close. 
to uh um wow check that out where was the why didn't the keto butai hit us at uh a and speaking of which where's our bombardment at Okay, well, I-174 is at Luganville, and it's getting hammered right now. By hugging the bottom, huh? Oh, not this time. Nice. Nice. Okay, so the Farragut and the Dewey, it looks like they put some good... Wow, on fire. That doesn't sound good. I-174 is on fire, underwater, near Luganville. Go figure. Ah, he's back for more. This time his, his uh, bombardment does much better. Here's it. Here it is. This is what I was looking for. Yeah. Let's do this. All right. So these are our heavy cruiser task force that came in from the Maya. They're now here bombarding his troops. So let's fast forward and see what we get done. Now, I've been told, and this is very possibly true, that when you bombard enemy troops in a friendly held base hex, it's not as effective as if you're attacking the base, an enemy base with troops. So let's see how true that is. It could be true. We brought in everybody, though, as you can see. So this is the, f <laughs> this is what I brought in to do the job. Okay. Um, not that great. <laughs> I was hoping for a lot better. Uh, I, every little bit counts. I mean. This knocks down his AV for sure, but it's not really what I was hoping for with the task force this size. Uh, and you can see that I even had my spotter planes set up to do spotting for these ships, but it, this is the best we got out of it. I was really hoping for more, but that's what we got. And this leads credence to what people were telling me, that if you do a bombardment attack uh, in a base hex you hold against enemy troops, it's not as effective. And this makes sense. And it, I can kind of see why. If you think about it, if you're bombarding like a base, you know where all the troops are. They're concentrated in one area. But his troops are kind of spread out through the jungle in this hex. And it's a lot harder to, to, to hit them, right? I guess that's the theory behind it. It makes sense to me. Let's continue on. I'm glad that the bombardment went as expected, though. Wow, check this out. Don't you just love this? The assault odds are 1 to 73, okay? And still, we take the casualties and he takes none. So he's impervious to us, even though we have an AT gun regiment. Isn't that a bunch of crap? He should have no... They, they, these guys should be gone. Like, these are 37mm anti-tank guns, and they would go right through these armored cars like a hot knife through butter. But the game does not agree. So we take some casualties, but we hold. And he burned a bunch of supply there. Okay, we got the daily bombardment at Chang Shaw. What an annoyance that is. Just gotta ride through this. I mean, there's not much more I can do. All right, so, well, we lose some stuff, but so does he. Oh, guys, here it is. This is it. Look at how pitiful these numbers are. Look at this. Pitiful. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it, guys. We held out. We somehow survived this. We held at Luganville. That's incredible. So, here's the tally. He attacked us with 14,000 troops. 
assault value of 472 uh, versus 92. 115 to 71. He takes our fort level down to zero, which is definitely not good. Uh, and here are the casualty numbers. These are bad. Yeah. That's bad. He destroyed a lot of, yeah, this, <laughs> we held, but it was at a heavy cost. Um, I don't see, I don't see us being able to recover from this next turn, but we'll talk about that more. But we held out for at least this turn. We just hardly destroyed anything. Look at that. <sighs> Man, that's frustrating. It's so frustrating. And we held it, you know, to what end. And then here's Gazmata taking on this Lark Battalion. Good. You know what? Fine. I'm kind of dumb dealing with it. It's been two months of dealing with that thing, and it's finally gone. Can't say that I'm going to miss it. He captures Gazmata and takes out that Lark Battalion fragment. Okay, now he's going to take Ben Colon. Sumatra's coming along nicely for him now. Oh, okay. A Royal Thai division. I'm surprised that he brought them this far down. I mean, you would think these guys would be operating in Thailand. Uh, they don't get the job done either. 7 to 1 odds and they still don't win. These, these Royal Thai army units are no good. Wow. So that's it, huh? Well, we held at Luganville, but it didn't go too great. But, you know, I didn't think we would hold it all. I can't be that upset, right? Lost the Destroyer today, which makes me upset. I'll be interested to see what exactly hit mines. And where? Ooh. Revenge has now showed up as reinforcements at uh, Cape Town. All right, let's uh, see how bad the damage is here. Can't believe we held. Guys, check it out. Luganville. We still own it. Can you believe it? I can't. But for how much longer, that's another question. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers here. Aircraft losses for today. Look at this astronomical uh, amount of zeros shot down over Ceylon today. I cannot believe that. And it doesn't even make sense because all we had there was a bunch of Fulmars, which are very bad, and some Hurricane 2Bs and uh, some Sea Hurricanes. And despite all that, we still won the day. 27 losses versus... Uh, I'm sorry, 26 shot down versus 7 losses. Us. Definitely in our favor today. These are the numbers that I want to see. And we're definitely closing the gap on aircraft losses here. So 21... Zero shot down air to air, which still baffles me. Three full mars down, uh, a spattering of Japanese aircraft, a PBY-5, a C-33, a B-26, and a hurricane, uh, a sea hurricane for us. Overall, excellent numbers. Really fantastic performance over uh, Colombo, Ceylon. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, looking at the top pilots for this turn. Uh, no new aces, but we are adding quite a bit more kills to our list here. One wounded and two KIA pilots. And looking at pilot replacement levels. Uh, all of our wounded pilots are working their way back into squadrons, which is great. And in the reserve, all of our wounded pilots are showing as a return date. So we've either retired the rest or this is what we got. So getting a lot of pilots back. Our pilot attrition rates have been very, very uh, sustainable looking at that. 
uh, for the whole campaign, despite losing over 800 aircraft, we only have 204 KIA, 41 MIA, and 143 wounded. That's really good. So uh, about a third of our pilots are, no, make that about a quarter of our pilots are lost out of the aircraft. So 800 aircraft, about 200 and some odd pilots. That's a, that's a good trade any day of the week, no matter how you look at it. Okay, looking at um, Army loss points, they did creep up a bit for us due to various combat things, and a little bit for him too, but nothing noteworthy. The ship sunk. This was kind of fun. Uh, we took out the Yasushima Maru. We did a little hit-and-run attack with destroyer mine layers coming out of Wake. They're now on their way back to Pearl, but I thought I'd send them down there just to take out that stupid patrol boat that I've been looking at for the last month. I'm tired of seeing it, so... We wiped him out, and it's a good patrol boat. It's one of the uh, three ASW rating patrol boats, the three-pointers. These are the ones that I like to kill whenever I can kill a ship, uh, a patrol boat. So good for us. Unfortunately, we did have to give up the Flusser, which is a Mayhan class uh, destroyer. This was sunk getting back into Colombo due to Lodric's ridiculous sub-trap all around Ceylon, which is just uh, completely obnoxious, and it's going to make it difficult getting in and out of that port. But I have some help on the way that will hopefully kind of fix that in the next couple turns. Because I don't want to keep dealing with his subs over there. It's just too much. It's too much. So, yeah, I, I'm very upset about losing the Flusser. I don't have enough destroyers to go around right now, and I really don't want to be losing him like this, but there's not much else I can do about it right now. It, it's lost. Okay, so... Uh, I I feel that we inched up on him last turn. The spread is now 1,600 points, right? He's definitely not pulling ahead at this at this rate. It's holding steady. So we've stopped the bleeding temporarily in our campaign. Uh, for how long, I don't know. But at least for now, we've stopped it. So get a good look at this screen. Hopefully, you take it all in. Uh, again, a fantastic performance in the air um, by our British pilots in Colombo and we gave the Kido Butai a hurtin. We can take a look at Sigint here. See if we got anything noteworthy. Okay, so he's moving more stuff to Kalajati. That's in uh, Java. He's sending another construction unit to Rabal. Hmm. Okay, not, not much else to glean from that. Nothing else here I see is that particularly noteworthy. Taking a look at the ops report, um, we did capture Butuan, which is uh, one of our bases on the Philippines. Just keep scrolling through here, see if there's anything good. Oh, this AM Lismore did uh, admirable service combating the enemy subs last turn. Despite there being five subs there, this guy kept them pinned down, was dropping death charges like crazy. And I think he even damaged one, so that's awesome. Get some kill counts here. Look at this, guys. Awesome. Just scrolling through here. A lot of sightings. Here's us moving uh, tons of troops to Luganville last turn, but you know I don't know how much it helped. I, I maybe it helped, but uh, the Eighth Marines are getting beat up over there pretty hard. Still, he captures Gazmata and Ben Colon. Notice, notice this. Luganville did expand fort back to size one, so we kept up with it. Okay, all right, looks good. Uh, and as you recall during the turn, I did point out that I heard some mines being hit. So I'm going to take a look at this. And I think I know what it is. So if we scroll down a bit, right here. So he's got mines clearing at Semarang, which is in Java. And it appears that one of his AMCs, which is a coastal minesweeper, hit a mine. And that's what sank. So well, unfortunately, it wasn't something more juicy like a submarine, but, you know. 
a, a ship is a ship. So this is another ship that we're owed that the Japanese are probably not going to tell us about for some time. But we know it sank. We heard it sank. That's our kill. Now, we've gone through that. Let's talk about the strategic situation. So, you know, I've been looking here in China, and I'm starting to get some heebie-jeebies. Do you guys see anything that I'm seeing at Sion? What if he's got troops out here? I wouldn't even know it. And if he comes in this way and he takes Sion from this direction, he could he could cut off our line of attack, our line of advance. So I'm starting to rethink holding Sion at this point. Uh, yes, it does have some fuel. Yes, it does have some industry. It's got all those things, but is it worth it? Why are we keeping this open? Uh, I feel like we're just at, at risk of being outflanked over here, and I won't see it coming until it's too late. So I am starting to think that it might be time to give up this position and also give up Sion and find another defensible position further up here. Um, or maybe even two. We may have to split up a bit. I don't know. But I'm just not feeling comfortable holding Sion with this wide open pathway this way. And I've been thinking about this for a few turns, but now I'm really starting to uh, get second thoughts. So I'm kind of wondering if it's worthwhile to send like a tripwire unit down to here just to guard in case he's flanking. And if he does decide to come in Sion with a big force, what is our plan B? Where are we going to fall back to? So we don't want to give up Lan Chao, but there's multiple, there's two different hexes that he could take to get up there. So we'd have to find two different hexes to defend. And I don't really know what those are, so I, I'm guessing here and here. Because we don't want these guys to get cut off, right? Man, this is a tough one. I I'm going to have to really look at where I would want to fall back to to see if it even makes sense to do it. Hmm. Tough decisions, but if we get flanked here, I was just thinking about this now. It it it's going to really invalidate everything we're doing down here. So I'm going to look at this and come up with a plan, but I, I do feel like it might be time to pull out of here. I don't know what what's more to be gained by blocking this unit. And we're saving Sion, which is fine. It's got fuel and oil and all that stuff. But do I really need this base? If I collapse it back a bit and we just maintain um, that Lanchow, which has more oil and more fuel anyway, it may be better. And we can get whatever else we need from Rangoon. So I'm thinking about doing that. No other news. For oh, there they are. So these guys made it in. So now we've got 160 AV sitting on a times two terrain with some decent fort. We should be able to hold out for a while at Uma, Urimchi. But I know he's got more than one unit, right? So maybe he's heading up this way, and I think he's heading down this way too. We know he's got about 800 AV of troops in this area. I just don't know exactly what direction they're going to head in. Uh, in a central part of... China, everything is looking fine. Nothing new to report here. Uh, down here, we're just kind of packing things up and we're we're moving stuff out of Kukong as as we can. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this unit out now because there's no point in it staying here any longer. Uh, we're getting nothing for holding this hex on its own. So these guys will fall back, and then we're going to move. We're going as you see here, we're going to strap move quite a bit of these guys out. Some of them to rearm. Some to re redistribute and just rest up, and we'll keep probably about I don't know fifteen hundred to two thousand AV here just as our guard force in the south, because we must maintain this whole flank here. It does appear that the armored car unit is retreating here, which is fine because it takes some pressure off these hexes. So I think I also may want to start uh, moving this way to guard against any incursions in this direction from him. Because he may try to get sneaky here and go and cut our supplies down at Kukong. So there's our situation in China. It, nothing significant to report this turn, but I am getting concerned about this this ingress path into Sion. I think it might be time to reevaluate the whole defense down here and fall back into something better. 
But unfortunately, because I need land shell due to the fuel and the supply that it can generate, um, I don't really know how to fall back and guard on one hex. I don't know if it's even possible to do it. So, well, again, as I mentioned, I will look at contingency plans here and come up with a solution. I'm kind of wondering if we need to go boom, 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 and split the defense three ways here. So that cuts off all avenues of approach into land chow from the south. It keeps them from coming down this way. I, I think that kind of might have to be the play there. So we'll look at it and come up with a plan. Okay. Uh, looking into this craziness here. We've got these guys that got out. We have a bunch of unloading supply here, which is great. We have these guys, which is now being called two battleships and a bunch of light cruisers, which I don't know how accurate that is, but they're definitely surface ships that can kill uh, convoys. So they're just kind of sitting there lying in wait. We've got a million subs all through here, which are just causing us all kinds of trouble. This poor ship here, it needs to go back in to rearm. And it will send it back out after that. We do have the British carrier is back and safe in the port. And we're going to start working on getting some of these ships repaired here from driving around for a few days the indomitable um you know i would say the mission was a failure but what it did do was draw his kido butai aircraft north towards ceylon and allowed us to absolutely shred his fighters at this point i don't think he's going to continue the attack because he can no longer escort his his bombers effectively he can send in an escort and now that we have Geez, here, this is easier if we look at it this way. At, at Colombo, we've got basically 60 fighters ready. So we have almost three times as many fighters. So it really makes no sense for him to try to attack us at Colombo. So I'm pretty sure that he's going to back off next turn because he just can't escort. If he tries to send in a, a, a raid now, he's going to lose so many aircraft. It's not even going to be funny. All right, so... Um, what did the heavy lifting here this last turn for our kills were these Hurricane, these Hurricane at uh, two A's and two B's, a little bit of the Sea Hurricanes, and the Fulmars actually got a kill too, uh, but they lost the most aircraft there. They, they suffered uh, three shot down, but I, I'm just amazed at how well we did with these aircraft. So all these aircraft, a lot of them came off of the uh, Indomitable. I unloaded them while they were still at sea and put them in a Ceylon. Because I just had a sinking suspicion that just in case he decided to push up further and launch a raid, um, I wanted to have the cap up and protecting the ships in port. And it worked better than I could have expected. And I've already explained to you why I don't think he's going to fire up again. He's going to hit south because he can't escort anymore. He lost too many zeros and he can no longer effectively escort a raid if he comes at us. But the Fulmars seem to be tanking all the damage and these Hurricanes and the Sea Hurricanes did all of the actual killing. So we got a lot of pilots with kills in here now, and I'm really happy about it. Couldn't have gone any better. If we can just deal with the submarines over here, I think we'll be okay in Ceylon for a while. And I think we bought us some time before we have to deal with Kido Butai coming back. He's going to have to go back and get more aircraft at this point because what he's got on these ships is not enough. And no complaints from me. So looking further down here, we also have... Uh, this task force moving northwest. I have no idea what it is. It says patrol boats and, and stuff, but it says it's patrol boats and stuff, but I don't, uh, I don't buy it. It's something else, and I don't know what it is yet, but we'll see as it gets a little closer. This is still that same little um, task force just here being a nuisance and kind of trying to draw attention away. Let me turn these off. All right, so looking further south, we have an interesting thing here. It's got five 
uh, five ships sighted and one light carrier. Appears to be bringing just fighters, and it's probably just to keep it's probably to keep cap over whatever this is. I wonder if this is like a, a fuel convoy or or something from Adon because he's trying to get some of this uh, oil and stuff out of here. Maybe that's what it is, and he wants to protect these tankers. That's all I could think of, but it's definitely got a CVL with fighters, so that's not a ship that I'm really looking to uh, get entangled with right now with my aircraft. Uh, here in Malaya, we are still actually now blocking the road, north and south. <laughs> We've managed to cut the rail line once again. How impactful that will be, I don't know. I assume at this point, Lodric has moved all the troops he's going to move out of Singapore. Uh, north towards Bangkok. And then hopefully, either up this road and up this road. Because I'm, uh, to be honest with you, I'm ready to get the fight for... Burma going. It's got to happen at some point if he wants to be effective in his campaign. And you know what? Now is as good a time as ever, right? The nice thing is we do have more Chinese troops coming in. We finally got British troops made it down through here. And we're reinforcing the Burma road as we speak. Okay? We've got these guys in the road. And once they're on that road, they move really fast. Okay? Got these guys coming in. We're going to strap move these guys down here to Tunggu. And we're going to start uh, securing the Burma Road as best we can. Because he's going to try to come up through this way, take Pegu, and try to cut the road. As long as we have one of these pathways open, we can maintain the Burma Road. So I'm going to do my best to reinforce these bases along of it, along of it, along it, to make sure that we can keep it open. We also have troops coming down this way, and they're finally making their way down the road here. And once they're on this road, they should move a bit faster. So we're gonna we have reinforcements coming down overland right now, of varying degrees of of usefulness. Come on, Logic, come into Burma. I'm ready to kick this thing off. Let's do this. Getting this forts up. Somebody was telling me that Rangoon was clear terrain. It's not. It's urban light. So Lodrick's going to have to bring a ton of troops to take this from me. Rangoon, anyway. It's urban light, which is times two. We got almost size four forts there. We've got 1,400 AV worth of, of, of troops there, right? Some of these units are actually pretty good. You know, so like I <laughs> I hope he's bringing everybody because I'm ready for him if he does. The only other thing I was thinking about, you know, since we're, I already was done talking about China, but what if Lodric starts moving troops this way and rails a bunch through Saigon and decides not to go for Burma but to backdoor China? You know, he could definitely try that, right? So I think I'm going to start moving troops over here to cover this back door just in case because you never know. He can also be coming up this road, come through this way, and slice it here. So I need to get a blocking unit right there too. Man, as I'm looking at this, I see a lot of little places for him to get sneaky. So I think we need to kind of seal these off while we can. While I don't think he would do that, like it doesn't make a lot of sense. He could if he's really desperate to get into China, right? I really think the way to beat China, though, is to take out Burma and cut the Burma Road so all these supplies in Rangoon that I keep dumping into China stop flowing that way. So he would be better off taking out Burma. The terrain is better for him to, to walk in. we got better roads than we've got back here. And there's a lot of points in this, right? So I... I think he should go for Burma first. But again, we don't know where he's at, so... That's my theory. Okay, a lot of ships sighted down here in Java. We have this thing moving southwest. I don't know what this is. We've got a lot of destroyers. Got some aircraft on it. it looks like a CVE moving southwest. Uh, here at Maroc, he's got uh, more AMCs. I'm for, I'm for sure of it. They're probably sweeping the last of these mines, and they'll get away with it. And then he is moving towards Batavia. 
and he's slowly cutting the supply lanes uh, so we can't get that supplied anymore. And then they're going to be cut off and isolated. And he's continuing to roll up on this part of Java. This is the eastern part. And pretty soon he's going to be in to Jillet Jap. And then I got to move these aircraft out of here. Not, don't really have a good spot for them. Java will be falling at some point. Uh, here at Bandramasin, he just landed and he's about to take it. So I need to try to get... Uh, I need to destroy these planes before he gets to them. I'm going to transfer these guys to Makassar. And unfortunately, I have to leave one behind. And we're going to destroy that too. Okay. Unfortunately, also, the 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 show's over for the President of Madison. Um, he's going to take this base next turn. And when he does, the ship is too damaged to move. Or it's it's stuck in what do you call it? Pier side. So it's gonna it's gonna get scuttled. I tried so hard to save it, but it just I just couldn't do it. It had a long journey from December seventh in Manila all the way to Surabaya, back to here. Almost got shot up by a cruiser over here. It's been a journey, but the journey is coming to an end. So this base falls next turn and that ship's going with it. And with that uh, Lodric is doing a great job of, of wrapping things up in Borneo, but he's still got two big nuts to crack. He's got Terracan with its coastal defenses, which are historically very deadly. And these guys are now fully established. You see that? All four of these 120mm guns are alive and well. Base force is looking good. These guys are looking good. Very few disabled squads, so Terracan's going to be a, a little bit of an issue for him when he comes in. I look forward to when he does. Because I remember playing this Japan against the AI. I lost so many ships trying to get into Terracan. And then, of course, he needs Balak Poppin. I'm, wait I'm waiting for him to come. Come on over, man. Let's let's do this thing. It's a nice jewel for him because I forgot to shut up the fuel uh, production early on. So there's a lot of fuel left there. And then, of course, we're here at Butuan. And I have these guys now moving straight for Surigao. I'm pretty sure that when we get in there, we're going to destroy these guys because he's got two beat-up Naval Guard units and one base force. And unless he's been bringing in a lot of reinforcements here, uh, we're going to come in there like a wrecking ball and just rip these guys up. He did send some uh, bombardment task force through here last turn, and I still think these guys here are another one, and they're also going to come and hit Butuan as we go up. I'll be interested to see what exactly is in this. I don't think there's a bunch of battleships, but there may be some heavy cruisers. So let's see what he's using these for. Uh, and I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad they're up here as opposed to being further south, right? Because this is a distraction up here. Uh, Mindanao is not worth much long term. So if he's sending all his heavy units up here for this, they're not down south where they can hurt us worse. At uh, Bataan, the death is drawing near, okay? We're still sitting here, unable to build any forts. The fort level is not great. We have no supply. And he's finally marching on us. Okay. So pretty soon, in about three to four turns, he'll be in Bataan. And that's it. We're done on Luzon after that. Then I really need to think about moving like this guy. I think it's time to pack this guy up. Okay, one day he'll be ready. We'll move him further south, maybe to Samar or to uh, Bay Bay. Because we need to get that. I would like to get this sub in a little bit of shape for the long, long sail home. Because with that damage level, it's, <laughs> it's going to take a long time. This part of the DEI is quiet for now. Over here at Perth, we continue to unload fuel, lots of fuel. Got these guys dumping in here. Got these guys about ready to uh, head back to Cape Town next turn. These guys have completed their unloading and are now heading back to Cape Town. So we got quite a bit of fuel and supply into these bases. Okay, and we're also working on expanding this port. Nice and slow, but we will do it. So yeah, uh, Perth fuel situation is good. The rest got shipped over. All right, getting closer here. These guys are coming in with another 
34,000 of fuel from Cape Town. We'll dump that into Melbourne and that will help supply all of these bases here. Um, at Sydney, we have this task force coming in next turn and it's got more fighter squadrons, okay? And it's got a PBY unit, which I can get operating off of New Caledonia soon, which I'll be happy to have. So these guys will be a much needed uh, convoy coming in under heavy, heavy escort with lots of fuel, lots of supply, and it looks like three fighter squadrons and one PBY squadron. And again, I left these guys, these guys left out of LA weeks ago. Um, and what I did was I split up all these guys into thirds so that if any one of these ships were taken out by a sub, I wouldn't lose an entire fighter squadron. I just lose a third of it. So that's what I'm doing to transport my aircraft now that the sub threat is back on and so deadly. So uh, I do have some concerns in this area. We no longer see Lodric uh, carriers here, but what I think has happened is, for whatever reason, he did not support Luganville, but I think he's heading south. And for I don't know why, maybe bad weather on his carriers. The carriers did not fly off aircraft, but these guys are spotted. And I recall watching this singular ship, which I have heading up here as a picket ship, I seem to recall that saying it saw a B5N2 Kate spotting it. Now we all know that, that that came from one of his carriers, right? But we don't have spotting on it. So I think the carrier is somewhere in here. Is the only thing I can think of is he went from here to maybe down here. So all this shipping is now at risk. So I have this picket ship heading north and it can work as a good distraction. I have this convoy split up and heading in multiple directions. It's empty now, so it's just empty ships. I have it heading south and I have its escorts moving at full speed. Like these destroyers are heading right back into Sydney and they'll make it before he can attack and disband. Uh, I got three a four AMs also and I need to go these guys to full speed. And they should be somewhere around here. They may or may not clear the carrier in time. These guys need to go... Uh, like, down this way. These are not very useful. These are mostly uh, Dutch APs, the little 10-speed 10, 10 4,000 endurance ones. All I have is some supply on there. Not the end of the world if they get taken out, but I would prefer to save them, right? Because they are worth points. Uh, and I want to use these guys to shuttle troops into Luganville if we still hold it in a few turns, because they're they're expendable, and we have so many of them that we can make we can split up a unit into many many small pieces and lose very few in case one gets taken out by a torpedo or something. We have. These guys trying to get into Nemea, which I'm going to probably have them go something like this. Well, that's not what I wanted. Okay. I'm going to send these guys kind of wide just to kind of give us another turn worth of clearing out of the area here just in case. All right. These guys will disband next. These guys, this ship I'm moving up to uh, Kumak so I can stand up a, another PBY unit to get better spotting. But yeah, I feel like we have carriers in here somewhere and we need to figure out where they're at. And hopefully next turn, he doesn't push too far south. But you know, if he does, we'll be ready. I'm going to redistribute my fighters so that I have lots of cap over Brisbane and lots of cap over Sydney where I have convoys at or going to be going into. So if he does elect to attack, we've got plenty of cover for them. Now, let's fin let's talk about Luganville. <laughs> Once again, we somehow managed to survive it. Our This task force didn't get a chance to engage because he pulled his ships out just in the nick of time. I guess he was done unloading because he skedaddled and we never got a chance to engage. So these guys are going to head back to Nemea. 
right? These ones are heading back to Nomea. And this was my bombardment task force, which unfortunately didn't get as much done as I want. But I had them moving at full speed back to Nomea as well. Because we're done here. They're out of ammo. They can't do another bombardment. So that's, that's all we're going to get out of them. So this is what we've got left after this. We had... Uh, here, let's look at the combat report. When we started the fight, we had... Jeez, where is it at? 92 AV. He had 472 at the start. This is what he adjusted. 115 to 71. He takes our fort down to zero. Takes a lot of disabled, but we take a lot of destroyed. So... Destroyed for me right now are not replaceable because I can't really get more troops onto the island. The disabled will come back at some point, but not fast enough. So I'm hope I'm thinking that next turn it's going to be 372 to maybe f 50, probably less. And I don't know if we can hold against those odds. Here are what we do have going for us. We still have plenty of supply. The fort level came back up, right? Fort level is back. We have this. The tanks are still intact. We lot we, a lot were disabled, but none were destroyed. So we still have tanks, and he doesn't. Okay, I am still moving in the Marines. These are all disabled, but some of them will re will restore next turn, right? And I'm and hopefully we get more more in and these guys get uh not disabled next turn but even then I, 50 is the high number for assault value maybe a little bit more uh i am even less confident now than i was this last turn that we can continue to hold because he's still got so many troops here and we didn't kill any we just disabled a bunch so at this point i think Prudence demands that I move these aircraft back to Nemea. I just don't think we can hold a second turn. I left them here to defend against the Kido Butai coming in here and doing a, a strike. Uh, they did not strike. So I don't know what Lodric's plans are. Maybe he's going to come back next turn and then strike. In which case, do I leave the fighters there? Or do I not? Or does he... Press further south and, sh and hit the shipping, and in which case I leave the aircraft here. I can't. I don't know what to do with these aircraft. Do I leave them or do I not? I, <laughs> I feel like if he, if we don't have the aircraft here and a carrier to come back and hit this island, we will lose because we won't be able to deal with the airstrike. It's going to cause too much disruption and casualties, right? But if we leave the aircraft here and he, Kido Butai does not attack and he takes the island, I lose all of them. 81 aircraft total. So it's a really tough decision for me. Uh, and it was last turn, but I think it made more sense last turn. It's even less... It makes even less sense now. Uh, let me do some quick math here. So we had... And again, AV is not everything. It's just a rough estimate, right? 472 divided by 94... Is... Five to one advantage, right? Let's say he's got 370 divided by my 50. Now it's a 7.4 to one advantage. I think it's even less worse odds than before. And we took heavy casualties during this attack. So I think it might be time to just concede to the fact that I can't hold Luganville against this force. So I think I'm probably going to go ahead and pull the aircraft off now and send it back to Nemea. I don't even lie. I hate it. I hate the thought of it. It makes me angry that we lost so much here. Um, but I I just can't justify lose, leaving this many aircraft here with these odds being even worse than they were before. Five to one made kind of weird sense to me before. This time around, it, it makes even less sense. So even if the Kido Butai elects to come back here and attack next turn, you know what? It is what it is. I'm going to just cut my losses. I did what I needed to do here, guys, but um, I don't think I can do it anymore. So these aircraft will probably be coming off, and these poor guys are going to be on their own. 
And if they die, they die. I hate it. But that's the situation we're in. I can't get reinforcements here because his carriers keep denying those sea lanes. I need carriers here to escort my reinforcements into Luganville, and I just don't have them here. So, you know, that's it for this turn. Uh, we held out. I'm really happy we did. Uh, I really wanted an air battle over Luganville because I felt like these fighters would have done a great job. I think we could have killed a lot more Keto Butai fighters if he would have fought us here, but he just refused to do it. So, you know, um, the aircraft no longer serve a purpose to me now that I don't have a verifiable threat from the Kido Butai because it's missing in action. Uh, it very easily could have egress to the north, but this is telling me that it didn't because he can't spot this from here and be here, right? He's got to be somewhere in here for any of this to make sense. So he could continue attacking south, come back to Luganville and strike it again. But my planes will not be there to meet him if he does. We'll fall back to New Caledonia and set up shop there and come up with a plan to retake Luganville later on because I just no longer have the assets to keep throwing into that. So thanks for watching, guys. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. I've been talking for a long time, and this video went way longer than I wanted it to. But you know the situation now. If you have any questions about anything, please ask me. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I left some stuff out on this video. Other places you may want to see that I haven't been talking about lately. By all means, uh, ask your questions either on Discord or here in the video, and I'll get you answers for them. Catch you in the next one.